about a minute out. Yeah, I got to you know, I'm sorry. Okay. What's good, fellas? What's good? It's a, <laughs> it's a day, man. My <laughs> had trouble coming in because everything's blocked off in my subdivision, man. And something else happened on the way over here, man. Oh, really? Yeah. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Sydney was robbed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. <coughs> what good, Mike and Joe? We don't question Salma. <laughs> Happy Tuesday, everybody. My name is Mike Jimenez, oh. and this is the Alamo City Sportscast coming at you from San Antonio, Texas. Joe Garcia producing today's show. I'm wearing my Bobcat shirt, but for some reason on the screen right now, it looks fuchsia. It doesn't look maroon. It looks like I'm wearing right? a purple shirt. <laughs> What's going on with this coloring? This is a maroon shirt, dude. This is maroon, right? I think that's just an oversaturation of the colors, probably by the, the web webcam or something. That is funny, man. That is funny. We have a big show today. Lots to get into today. We're going to get into the fact that the WNBA draft was last night and people actually cared. I watched it last night. We're going to crown the Batty Brackets 2024 champion, Salma Hayek. We'll go over that. Uh, but she destroyed Sydney Sweeney. I mean, did she? She did. And we have to go over the photos that she posted on Instagram yesterday. Okay. Maybe there is a point to say that a 57 year old could be the biggest baddie yeah. of 2024. Speaking of baddies, one of our sweet 16 finalists is coming to San Antonio for a concert later on this fall. So a big announcement when it comes to that. We're going to get to the Dallas Cowboys because the NFL draft is in just two weeks. And uh, there was a very interesting mock draft that came out today from a very reputable source that says the Cowboys might actually do something exciting in the first round. Want to get Cowboy fans takes when it comes to this. Yeah. Lots to get into today. WNBA, do the salaries need to be increased now because the big names are coming in? What about what happens at the end of next college season? Yeah. Because even more big names are coming through. Kind of exciting. I'm happy for the WNBA. Yeah. Now we have to address the the uh, elephant in the room. Usually on Tuesday we do Tuesdays, Tuesdays with Teague. Teague, and Carolina Teague is not with us today. Um, it was a, a very difficult decision that we had to make here at the uh, Alamo City Podcast Network. Um, if you remember, last Tuesday Carolina came on and kind of hijacked the show for the first three or four minutes, yeah. and the memes were created of me being startled by it all yeah, they and, were. and the fact of the matter is, is that i revisited that video joe revisited that video and it just wasn't it didn't come off right it was it, yeah. it was it was something that we did not like at all at the time i was scared i was startled a little bit scared by it all yeah uh she has beef and used our platform to kind of do that yeah. now caroline i'm a big fan of i love caroline i've been a big supporter of her at san antonio sports star uh, you know, at RCW with her podcast. I've been on her podcast. Obviously, I've enjoyed be being on with her. We've enjoyed having her on, yeah. too. Uh, at this point, I think a break is needed yeah. of, of some sort. Yeah. Okay, whether it's a permanent break or a temporary break, uh, some sort of break needed, needed to happen uh, because we are in the we are in a business. This, this yeah. podcast is a business. And I understand the arguments of it all. But at the end of the day, guess what? The listeners don't care about people's beef. Yeah, they don't. They don't. And uh, I, I understand that it kind of got heated and, and all that stuff. It shouldn't have gone there. So we apologize for that. We apologize for well, those who enjoy. I do, I do apologize to her because we I was trying to have a conversation. It got heated. We both said things, you know, and I acted inappropriately by losing my temper with her. So I'd, I'd like to apologize to Carolina for losing my temper with her and also to her husband because, you know, I, I lost my temper with Carolina and to her producer, Guylin Jackson, you know, because I lost my temper with Carolina. Hope she forgives me and we can move on from this. But go ahead and do please continue to support Carolina. We love her to death. She does great things. So go ahead and follow her at League of Her Own Podcast yeah. and also follow Guylin Jackson over at VodPod Media because they're doing great things over there as well. And regardless of what's happening here, 
we're still going to support her. We're still going to show love to her, regardless I, I, of what happens. I'm a big fan. And yeah. and the thing is, is that I think she does a fantastic job when she covers various yeah. events around town, uh, especially when she's doing boxing and MMA and when she's doing wrestling and all that stuff. She does a fantastic job. Yeah. But the thing is, is that this show uh, is our baby. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it's for us to design the direction of the show of where it's going. And we're trying to make this not just a hobby. We're trying a to business. make this a business. And because we're trying to make it a business, we have people who are listening to us right now who've been listening to the last five, six, seven, eight shows who want to potentially sponsor us. No. And we cannot have uh, loose cannons go off when we're trying to attract sponsors. And what ended up happening was we got inundated with phone calls from, yeah. from people who were potential sponsors. And we got inundated by people who are listeners of the show by, you know, whether it be by phone calls, by DM or no. whatever the case be. Do people flagged me down? At, at uh, you know, on the weekend when I'm at a restaurant saying, what the hell just happened the other day? They didn't like it. No. And a, a break needs to needs to be had of some sort, whether it's permanent or temporary. Time will tell. Well, we'll revisit that, man. You we, know, we should. as well. Yeah, because I like having Carolina on. I I'm do, gonna, too. Going to be honest with you. And uh, it wasn't handled in the best way possible. So we're going to try to figure this out as time goes on. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, it is Tuesday here in San Antonio. It is a wet Tuesday in San Antonio. So much so. Let me tell you about the last 20 minutes. Getting out of my neighborhood. Uh, I hook a right. Oh. Hook a right to get on Petrenko Road. Hydroplane a whole lane to the middle of the freaking Petrenko Jeez, Road, right? Dude. I'm like, okay, it's a little slick out here because when it starts, it's not pouring rain. It's actually okay to drive in the rain. It's when it's misty and slick that it's bad because what ends up happening is the oil, kind of, you know, the things on the, on the, on the street kind of just come to the surface and it makes things slippery. So I'm driving over here and usually we get going right around 10, 15. And I'm pulling into your neighborhood and I'm being stopped because they shut, they shut down the free, <laughs> they, they, they shut down the entrance to your neighborhood, yeah, right? Yeah. On the Hunt Lane, they, they, they shut it down. They only allowed one way of traffic in, and it was getting out of the neighborhood. So then I spun around. I called you up, and I was like, hey, what is your exact address? Because I don't know yeah. your address. <laughs> I remember your address when you first gave it to me. But the fact of the matter is, is that I now go over here by sight. So I go around to the other entrance of the uh, subdivision, yeah. and there's a cop who stops me. And there's all this big machinery going back and forth, back and forth. And, dude, I had to go through a maze to get over here and by the time i got to your house i was going by gps i have i have my phone in my hand my, with my gps by the time i got here i didn't know which way was up like it said i was here and i did this i was looking around like where's your house yeah because i didn't know what direction i was coming from yeah. because i went left right left right left right 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 left right left right left right just to get here when it's normally just a straight shot and to the right yeah because they closed the main street to come in here down I don't even know you could go in through the, the front. I don't know. You have to go all the way around and go yeah. to the front. Crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. But uh got here in one piece. And uh, you know, it's 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 just the way that things are when it rains outside. Dude, this it started drizzling. Oh, by the way, I I I, I recorded a video of myself last night. Yeah. I was going for a walk, right? Just wanted to go get some exercise. Uh, you know, but was working from home a lot yesterday. And I decided to go for a walk. And I wanted to go for a longer walk than normal. I normally go three miles. I wanted to go four or five. Halfway through, it started raining on me. I started recording myself doing a video going that this was karma for Duncan and Cody back in the day. God. But but people <laughs> would make fun of me because it didn't look like it was raining so, so much. Yeah. But I did get caught in the rain, and I was a mile and a half from home at the time. Yeah. Did four miles. And then today, I see it raining a little bit. And the thing is, is that uh, I have this uh, this these weeds in my front yard that I'm trying to get rid of and slowly but surely they're getting they're they're going away. Yeah. You have to like that that that's that turf Scott uh, you know yard builder or whatever kills weeds yeah, and the all Scott's that. yard yeah. builder whatever it is. But you need to do it before it rains is what they say. They're yeah. perfect. Yeah. So I see it's all misty. There I am barefoot and boxers going around just you know spraying all this crap in my yard trying to get it away. But I think that this last disbursement of of whatever that yeah. is that pink crap is basically it's the color of my shirt right now as it yeah. appears my, on air it looks pink. i'm never gonna wear this shirt ever again why does it look like i'm wearing a hot pink shirt something fuchsia 
But uh, anyway, hey, we are live on on uh, YouTube right now. We'll go back to Facebook and Twitter at some point. We have an experiment going on right now yeah. as to whether or not our YouTube numbers change when we move things to Facebook, when we move things to uh, to Twitter. We're trying to figure out the perfect combination of it all. Yeah, we're we're trying to we're experimenting to see where we're getting the most like interaction, viewership, and all that. But I, I don't know, man. We'll we'll have to see. So apparently my dog Duncan is the newest member of USOA. I've been meaning to ask this for the longest time. What the hell is USOA? United Sucios of America. Are you serious? <laughs> is that what that is? <laughs> so they they posted a photo of my husky Duncan the other day saying that he's the newest member. How did he get initiated? How did he get the invite? I don't know. And apparently my golden retriever Cody was not invited. Was it hard enough? Wasn't tough enough? Cody, Cody, I guess, isn't, you know, gangster enough for USOA. (laughs) Well, I like the fact that Duncan is the mascot now of USOA. Uh, Am I a member? I mean, Um, I I, I am Demon Mike. I don't know. I guess they have to kind of let you know you're a, what do you call it? Like, how do they say you're an honorary member? Dude, I thought I'd be like a founding member of this. No, they have their founders, but I think they're like, they have me as an honorary member. I don't know if they put you in as an honorary member or not yet. <laughs> I haven't heard I haven't heard the word from them. So last night, uh, I watched the WNBA draft for the very first time ever. And I I don't think I'm the only one. Uh, I think that I bet you when the ratings come out that people actually sat and watched this because you know, we watched the NFL draft which again is in a couple of weeks. We we get yeah. excited about that and I go to bars and watch it like it's a sporting event, right? We watched the NBA draft. We watched the NBA lottery for crying out loud. Now we did. And when it comes to um, the WNBA draft, I've never cared. There has never been, don't get me wrong, there have been a lot of names like Lisa Leslie and Cheryl Swoops and, yeah. and uh, uh, Cheryl Miller and all of those over the years and Kelsey Plum most recently. And, you know, you have all of these, you know, Della Don and all of these quote unquote WNBA stars. But I got to tell you this, Joe. And someone accused me of being the Bill Burr when it comes to this earlier this morning on Twitter. I like Bill Burr. I love Bill Burr, too. <laughs> There's never been a WNBA star. There, there never has been. We we have yet to have one WNBA star. There have been popular players, but no star. And we finally have not one, but maybe two or three oh, I coming think, on board. I think I know what you're meaning now when you're saying star, something that's kind of like it can it can go past the WNBA into like mainstream media stardom, you know, that very popular iconic player that puts all these eyes on the game. Well, I, I get you. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it transcends just what's going yeah. on on the court, right? So uh, I'm looking at a list right here of the 15 greatest WNBA players. I know Leslie Swoops time. is on there. You know, so back in the day, you had names like Sue Bird, yeah. Cynthia Cooper, uh, Becky Hammond. Uh, Lisa Leslie, you have names, uh, Don Staley, Cheryl Swoops, Diana Taurasi. I mean, these are some of the old school names from back in the back, day. Yeah. Uh, most recently, when you go into like today, yeah. you know, you have players like uh, Kelsey Plum, right? Yeah. You have some pretty decent names. Maya Moore uh, was really big back in the day. Uh, Brianna Stewart is still big today. Uh, Ella Della Don and all of those players, right? They could all walk into H-E-B right now and no one would know who they are. (laughs) Yeah. They would be like, man, that girl's tall, but no one would know who they are. And that's the thing about the WNBA. And people have always talked about how the WNBA players should be paid more than what they are. Yeah. Right. Because you take a look at the WNBA salaries compared to the NBA and it's ridiculous. You know, you have players in in the NBA right now making 50, 60 million dollars per year. But in the N- WNBA, they're not making squat. Yeah. Now, I saw this uh, this uh, post earlier this morning about what Caitlin Clark, this is according to Spotrack.com. She is signing a four-year rookie deal. Four-year rookie deal. To make 338000 combined all four years. Making 76000 this year, 78000 next. 85,000 the year after that in year four, a, a team option of $97,582. That's some big money, dude. I mean, 
That's big money if you're a school teacher. That's essentially what they're making. I mean, yeah, you can go, enough. you can be a school teacher and make 60K. Yeah, like school teachers don't get paid enough, you know, mm. to deal with all the stuff that they have to deal with, you know, and teaching all the kids. And I would never do it. And they have to buy like all their own supplies and all this, you know, so it's like they need to get paid more. But I mean, that's OK. You know, making that kind of money is all right, but it's not NBA level. Like even what is it like the minimum, the league minimum at the NBA level mm -hmm. is what? At least one one point something, one point two, one point three, yeah, right around yeah. there. I mean, think about it this way: the two way deals that are in the NBA, the two way deals that <laughs> where, where you're going back and forth from San Antonio to Austin, yeah, they're making more than what Caitlin Clark is going to make as the overall number one draft pick. Yeah. And the thing is, is that they now have stars; they now have visible people. Dude, if Caitlin Clark walked into any grocery store. Whether it be an HEB in They'd Texas, know who she is. or it would be, you know, a Safeway or an Albertsons or whatever, a Ralph's in California, everyone would know who she is. She is a star. And beyond that, you now incorporate the stars that already exist, the True. Kelsey Plums of the world. And suddenly you've got something. Cameron Brink yesterday, number two overall pick out of Stanford. You know, she went number two, and the thing about Cameron uh, Cameron Brink is she's six four, but she's also model looks. And I know yeah. a lot of women are going to hate this, dude. I know a lot of women are going to hate this, but you know what? Caitlin Clark's attractive. Cameron Brink is attractive. Angel Reese, who went number seven to Chicago, is attractive. J.C. Sheldon, number five out of Ohio State, five ten shooting guard, is attractive. And guess what? It means something. And yeah. it sucks because you don't have to be attractive in the NBA, but in the WNBA, if you want to get eyes and ears on you, it it, it helps. It yeah. helps that Kelsey Plum is cute. And it, I'm not saying that it's right, but yeah. that's just the reality of what it is. That is just the reality of what it is. And now you have, we saw this with the, with the college game with South Carolina and LSU and Iowa just kind of going back and forth with each other, with USC going back and forth, talking trash. I mean, Angel Reese... And you know the 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 whole conversation that she had with 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 uh, uh, with Caitlin Clark, and beyond that, Camilla Cardozo of South Carolina, who was basically roughing up Angel Reese, going back and forth with they were battling out just a month ago. Mm -hmm. They got drafted by the same team, yeah. and now they're going to be teammates with Chicago. Yeah, look at this. Midtown Texas says, "I can't crush on a girl with big feet, dude." Oh man, you know, I mean. I, I, you know what? I mean, if if some Hayek walked in the door and she had size nines, she has size nines. Yeah, it is what it is, dude. It is what it is. No, but you take a look over here, and I think what's going to end up happening is you're going to see the WNBA finally become successful. Last year, it lost ten million dollars. So the whole idea of you got to pay the players more, not if you're losing as an organization. $10 million, and it was propped up for 25 years by the NBA, Jeez. and I think this will be the first year that it's going to be profitable. And you have some stars coming out next draft that are very big. So the, the thing is, is that the WNBA is getting an influx of young athletic talent, you know? Mm -hmm. Look up Paige Beckers. Paige Beckers out of UConn. She's going to come out of the draft next year. I have a photo of her right now. Okay. Fact of the matter is, she is a badass on the court. And you know what? Smoking hot. Women will watch the WNBA if they find it interesting enough. But guys will watch it, especially if they're attractive on there. And you know what? There's a lot of attractive women who happen to be stars now in the WNBA or the better players, the new influx of talent coming in. I'm not saying it's right, but this is just reality. And yeah. now you're going to see six-figure salaries for some of these players as time goes on. Yeah, and I think it's going to be immediate. I think it's going to be immediate because, dude, Caitlin Clark, when she got drafted yesterday, what was the first thing she did? She hugged the people around the table. And who was the first person she hugged before making her way onto the podium? Jake from State Farm. <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> did you see that? I didn't see that. Jake I'm, from I'm State gonna, Farm, I'm going to look bro. that up right now, dude. Caitlin Clark. Oh, man. She was Jake from State Farm was out there celebrating with her on this. But, you know, the draft was last night, and it, it was fun. Here, here's the video right here. Here's the video. Oh, her. yeah, yeah. 
She's going through the tunnel. Jake, <laughs> Jake from, from State, State Farm, Farm gives her a big old hug because she's doing State Farm commercials. Oh, man. You know, so, so she's look, part look, of the family. She's part of the family. Yeah. So look at her. Look at her walk through. Walk all through. What up, Jake? Oh. Jake from State Farm makes more money than all top 10 players of the WNBA this year. Yeah, and that's what Matt Lerma said, too. He said, <laughs> Kate, Caitlin Clark is sponsored by State Farm. That's amazing, dude. So CP3, right? Yeah. Yeah, he comes out all the time. That's incredible, dude. But it's it's fun. I'm glad to see that that happened yesterday. I'm glad to see that the people were watching and, and, and caring. A lot of people were reaching out asking me yesterday, why didn't they air this at night? It's because yeah. they have their hockey game of the night usually on on a uh, Monday night, but uh, found that to be fascinating. Um, I saw a tweet from RJ Ochoa of San Antonio Sports Star. Big fan of RJ Ochoa, blogging the boys. Follow RJ Ochoa at RJ Ochoa. Blogging the boys, by the way, kind of in the uh, transition right now because the people who sponsor them, the people, not the, that, that, the platform, not the sponsors, yeah. the platform is dissolving. Oh. So blogging the boys might have... Uh, to branch off to do other things. But I found it interesting because we talk about the, the draft and the draft is a couple of weeks away. And I don't know if you know who Peter Schrager is, but Peter Schrager is from Fox Sports NFL Network. Uh, he does a lot of uh, a lot of good work. Man. He's on Good Morning Football. He says that he has been talking to basically every single team out there where he's talking to general managers, yeah. player personnel. He's going out there and talking to agents and whatnot. So this isn't a mock draft based on this is what i think this is a mock draft based on here is what i'm hearing from sources all around the nfl as a draft is only nine days away yeah interesting mock draft i will take this one at face value and it's posted on nfl.com Number one, he has Caleb Williams going to the Bears. Everyone knows that Caleb Williams is basically only visiting Chicago. Chicago has revamped their offense. We know that's going to happen. Yeah. Jaden Daniels going to the Washington Commanders at number two. Drake May, who remember we had Frank Harris of UTSA on last week with us saying that Drake May was his guy, that he thought that Drake May was the best quarterback of the bunch. Drake May of UNC going to the Patriots makes sense. Now, here's where it gets interesting. His sources, NFL.com sources, are telling this particular author or journalist, rather, that the New York Giants are going to trade up to number four to pick up J.J. McCarthy. That means picks one, two, three, and four are all quarterbacks. J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan. Dude, he played in a Harbaugh system. He had played four years, three years, rather, yeah. in an NFL-style system. That's the that's the allure to him. It's like we're not going to have to teach him the NFL style system. They ran at Michigan an NFL offense, which means that Marvin Harrison Jr. would not go to Arizona. He'd go to the Chargers to go play with Justin Herbert. Now, Arizona would drop to six, get uh, Roma Dunze from Washington at number six, the wide receiver. Uh, Brock Bowers, who I'm really big on. Uh, is projected to go now to the Jets at number 10. My Raiders, my Raiders, my Raiders, my Saints, rather. I'm looking at the Raiders right now. My Saints yeah. would go with uh, an offensive tackle out of Oregon State. Yada, yada. Okay. But again, the Houston Texans don't have a pick at number one. First round draft pick. They moved back down. So again, what the Texans did, Smart. They, went, they went from 23 down to 41. Got rid of their first round draft pick. Don't have to pay that salary. Yeah. Drop down to, to, to number 41. Got a second round draft pick in 2025, traded that for Stefan Diggs. I mean, they went down 18 spots to get Stefan Diggs. That's, is that's what how you did. run a front office. That's what you do. You know, I mean, but with that pick at 23, the Vikings would then go get Bo Nix out of Oregon. Jeez. Quarterbacks. That'd be five quarterbacks off the board. Now, number 24, your Dallas Cowboys. We're all in. We're all in. We're all in. They didn't do anything <laughs> this offseason. They didn't oh, do anything. No. But can I intrigue you, Cowboy fans, with the fastest player at the NFL draft, arguably the fastest player ever at an NFL combine, talking about Xavier Worthy out of the University of Texas, a wide receiver who is the fastest man in combine history. The dude ran a 4.2140, dude. 
a 4.21. That's faster than Cat Williams. Dude, dude yes, it is. <laughs> I, I got the video up here, uh, courtesy yeah, of NFL to, Network. See it, man. Courtesy of NFL Network. Dude, this guy is blazing fast. Xavier Worthy. Look, the first time he ran was a 4.25. And he's like, hold crazy. my beer. Let me go and do it again. Lines up in position. Cowboy fans, how excited would you be if you saw this guy wearing the silver and blue? Look at that. Look at him fly. 4.22. When they re-evaluated, it was a 4.21. He knew he did well. He Man. ran into the he ran the length of the field and he was gone. That's pretty fast. He was dude. gone, dude. <laughs> okay, so you are a reformed Cowboys fan, a lapsed Cowboys fan, and yeah. you are a Dallas fan. But could we intrigue you? With C.D. Lamb on one side and Xavier Worthy on the other. I know the Cowboys need to have the offensive line short up because Tyron Smith is gone, because Tyler Biotish is gone. Tyron Smith, future Hall of Famer, one of the greatest players on the yeah. offensive line in Cowboys history. Tyler Biotish, who did very well uh, as a offensive lineman for the Cowboys. They need an offensive line. Dang they yeah. also need a defensive line. Cowboys have bled talent. What are your thoughts of instead of going for an offensive lineman in the first round, maybe go for an offensive lineman later, but getting somebody for CD lamb on the opposite side of CD, giving Dak Prescott another weapon, a guy that can run a 4.21, a guy that is a, as a bona fide stud at wide receiver. Joe, would you be happy as a Cowboys fan? I'd be happy, man. You know who would be happy too, Jerry? Cause Jerry, likes to go ahead and pick offensive players versus defensive players. Mm -hmm. Jerry likes to go ahead and make those sexy picks. That's why his son doesn't want him anywhere near the booth when, they, when they're trying to make <laughs> these calls, you know. He wants Jerry on a yacht somewhere, you know, but if you leave it up to Jerry, that's probably who he's going to want to pick. You know, uh, it's a sexy pick. I think Cowboy fans would be excited because not only is he a stud wide receiver, not only is he the fastest guy ever in the NFL combine, he's also a UT guy. Jerry's not a dummy. No, he's not. I can see Jerry making this move. And why wouldn't you do it? I mean, if Dak, if you're going to go all in with Dak, you, you need to give him some weapons. Yeah. He has no running back. That he does not. And, you know, Tony Pollard is now with what the uh, the Tennessee Titans Titans. But, you know, I mean, running backs are a dime a dozen. You know, you don't necessarily want to overpay for running back, but they're crucial for your offense. Yeah. You know, so all you need is just a decent running back. You know. You need a decent running back and I, they're bringing back Rico Dowdle. And I like Rico Dowdle. It's just yeah. I don't think you're going to have. You know, a Super Bowl team with Rico Dowdle as your running running back, back. as your no, RB one. No, no. So there's got to be something going on. They're gonna have to draft another running back or something along the way. Make a trade, something. They're not gonna trade. They don't do it. They they, they just don't do <laughs> it, man. They're the Spurs. <laughs> They're the Spurs. We like who we got. You know, we're just gonna see what we got. We like the team we have. You know, yeah. in the meantime, we have no idea what's going on when it comes to Dak Prescott's contract situation. Final year of his deal. If he if he bolts. You know, we're talking tens of millions of dollars of dead cap space. Cowboys need to do something with him. And the belief is, is that if he gets re-signed, it'll be, be between now and August 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, because you don't want to have that over his head. Because I don't think Dak Prescott cares. I think Dak, mm -hmm. Dak Prescott is willing to bet on himself, even though he's had season-ending injuries, even though he's had injuries that have left him out of the game for five or six weeks. Even still, I think he'd be willing to bet on himself, no different than what Kirk Cousins has done for so long. But C.D. Lamb has not been re-signed yet. No. Has not been extended. Micah Parsons has not been extended. No. So you got to do something to shake things up. And I think Xavier Worthy going to U going from UT to Dallas would be a big thing. Look at what Sid says. We're getting Zeke back. I hope not. That is actually the rumor going on right now that there is mutual interest in them coming back. Zeke Elliott signed a very, very small deal yeah. to play with New England. Look at Noah Perez, Perez says. He says the, his other teammate, A.D. Mitchell, is better. Yeah. I mean, they, they, those are good, good players. But, man, uh, A.D. ain't running a 4.21, though, man. That's the thing. And it's not like running a 4.21 and having no ability to catch the ball. I remember the Raiders many years ago got a guy who happened to have the last name Jet. 
a guy couldn't catch worth anything. Yeah. The the uh, the Texans one time had Will Fuller, Will Fuller the fourth as a yeah. wide receiver. Dude, he could beat anybody off the blocks. He could beat anybody down the field. Couldn't catch worth a damn. Xavier Worthy is that fast and can actually catch. He's a first round talent. And there's a belief that not only will you have five or six quarterbacks taken off the board in the first round, but you might have up to six wide receivers, Xavier Worthy being one of them. Yeah. You have big names that are like Malik, uh, Malik Neighbors. Uh, you've got a lot of big names out there. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. This is going to be fun. We're nine days away from the draft. You know what? We, we should have a special on that. Yeah, we should we could go ahead and have a NFL draft special. We, we gotta we gotta figure that one out, man. On a Thursday, I'm off on a Thursday. Not bad, not bad. <laughs> My name is Mike Jimenez. That's Joe Garcia. You know, we were talking about Jerry Jones and and what Jerry Jones wants to do to you know make a make a splash. Got to make a splash somehow because yeah. Cowboy fans yeah. right now are checked out. You know, he might actually make a splash when it comes to college basketball. Did you hear about this, Jerry Jones? He is known not only as a Cowboys guy, not only the owner and the oil guy and all that stuff, but he's really big into Arkansas sports, University hmm. of Arkansas, the Razorbacks. That's his team, right? That's where he went to school. Well, if you don't know, uh, within the past week or so, uh, John Calipari signed. He left Kentucky to go to Arkansas. So think about that. Yeah. Kentucky, which is the, the school of one and dones, right? They have two that are going to be drafted in the first 10 picks in the NBA draft this year. They got bounced in the tournament early, but he gets the star players to go wherever he's at in Kentucky to Arkansas. Think about that. Why would somebody go from a blue blood, Kentucky? Yeah. When you think about the blue bloods, it's Kentucky, that's Duke, that's North Carolina. Those are the blue bloods when it comes to college basketball. People were kind of questioning, why is he going? Because it's not even a lateral move. It's going down. Yeah. To go to Arkansas, Arkansas at SEC school, they do make the tournament from time to time. They're a decent basketball program, but why? The Brian Windhorse of <laughs> what's going on over here? Oh, man. So according to Bleacher Report and ESPN, talk about the fact that John Calipari is going to be making $2 million more than any other head coach in college basketball. Eight and a half million. So, okay. So that right there yeah, yeah. is reason, right? But it's about the NIL money. Look at the names that are pooling money together for NIL. Jerry Jones, the Waltons. Who are the Waltons? They own Walmart, yeah. right? They're the founders of Walmart. They don't own it. It's this publicly traded company, but they own a lot of it, well, right? The majority of the shares. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've got Jerry Jones. You've got Walmart. You've got Tyson Foods. And you've got other big names out there pooling their money together. How much have they pulled together? Five million dollars for the basketball program and NIL money. They're literally going to be able to buy <laughs> players, high schoolers to go over. So think about that. I'm looking at it this way, dude. If I'm in Vegas right now, looking at the at the futures in, in college basketball, I'd be betting for Arkansas. They're going to literally buy their way into the top ten. Wow. Five million dollars and nil and nil just from that little pool of of alumni. Well, investors. <laughs> so so the so when John Calipari are like, well, why is he leaving? Well, you're getting paid eight and a half million, and here's an extra five million to dole out to the players. That's, Amazing. I mean, that's a lot of money for you know somebody coming in and playing college ball. To various saying, money talks, baby. It does, man. Uh. Tavarius <laughs> also says Cal has not been a great coach lately, just like Pop. Oh, no. Dude, okay, so I, I I set the over under on you know we have all the NBA awards coming out. How many votes is Pop gonna get for Coach of the Year? Because oh, we had all man. these Spurs fans saying that he was, you know, I asked him to give a letter grade, and like twenty five percent said an A, and like thirty five percent said a B. Yeah, he's gonna get zero votes for Coach of the Year. I I would assume that somebody. Out there will vote Zero. for him. I will set the over under Joe at one half a vote. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't get any votes. Quite honestly, look at the team's record for the last two seasons. I mean, Chris Leha reaches out to us, MCS General Contracting, asking the question: Mad Peckers watch party? Hmm. hmm. 
I'll get in touch. Interesting. Interesting. That'd be interesting if we had some sort of draft coverage going on. Oh, yeah, dude. Hey, we could get uh, Poppy, big yeah. Brandon Medina involved as well. M very, very much so. Let's give some love to MCS General Contracting. Man, they finally, I say they finally, they they finished in pretty good time the, the project that I had in my backyard. Yeah, they did it right. They did it right. Yeah, they did it right. I, I've had people, I've had people come by already check it out, and they said that they like how it looks. Uh, even my ex came by the house and was taking a look in the backyard. Was like, wow, they did an amazing job. Let's give them some love. MCS General Contracting, more than thirty years of combined experience in concrete placement. They are the best in the business. Honest pricing, high quality work. They get going on house foundations, driveways, concrete patio decks. If you want to extend the deck, extend the driveway. If you're a business and you need to put together a slab, a parking lot, or other concrete placement services or sidewalks, reach out to MCS General Contracting at 210-774-9155. They're confident in their skills, so give Chris Leha over at MCS General Contracting a call at 210-774-9155. And thank you for being a sponsor of this show. MCS General Contracting, what do we say? Diamond, Diamond hard, hard, baby. Diamond hard. Diamond hard. Hey, don't forget to check out Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs and Ken's5.com. He has a new Locked On episode. Again, you can subscribe on YouTube. You can subscribe on Spotify. And it's asking about the pulse of the French fan base. Thoughts on Victor Wembanyama's rookie season and more. That is today's uh, episode, episode of yeah. Locked On Spurs. He just posted it 25 minutes ago. Jeff does a fantastic yeah. job. And uh, again, they're talking about Wemby, and I'm looking forward to the announcement being made that the Spurs are playing in France because Budos in I'm, Paris, Budos in Paris. I'm amped up, dude. I am amped up. The thing about it is this: I think I'm going to do it. Budos in Paris. I think I'm going to go. <laughs> I would put myself at having a percentage of going at thirty yeah. percent, which is a lot higher than five. Well, I wonder how expensive the trips are because I think the trips are cheaper, right? If you go in the, you know, going to an let's say European destination versus sometimes going here in the States. So I was looking, comparing the the airfares, and sometimes they're a little cheaper if you get them at the right time. Dude, it's really not that expensive to go over there. It's the hotel costs. True that. that is expensive. It is the food cost that's expensive. Maybe Airbnb the, the, it. The air the airfare is maybe seven eight hundred dollars. And Midtown saying that I'm backpedaling on finally no MCS General Contracting told me they would take two days. It only took them a day and a half. So they actually finished faster than what I thought. I was basically I used the wrong word. So bite me, you guys. Bite me. The MCS did a fantastic job. Um, Kendrick Perkins made an announcement today saying that his Defensive Player of the Year vote went. To Rudy Gobert, my question is: Does Kendrick Perkins have a vote? I mean, I know he's former NBA player. Well, he is, I guess, media because he does work for the four-letter network ESPN. You know. Well, I know JJ Redick uh, made his announcements uh, yesterday, and Matt Larma, who's following our show, uh, basically got all pissed off, saying that he's dead to him. But uh, <laughs> JJ Redick uh, basically said that he is posting, uh, he's voting for Rudy Gobert as well. It's going to happen. Rudy Gobert is going to be the NBA most valuable player. The question becomes, will Wemby even be first team all NBA defense? And you know what? It's looking less and less likely. Even though Vegas had him as the number two odds to win the, the defensive player of the year, yeah. the votes that have come in, and I know there's dozens of votes out there, but the six, seven, or eight that we've seen so far don't look good. If that's a straw poll as to what's actually going on, because you had one that came out and said, that he's a first place vote. But if you have two or three say that he's a first or second place vote and then he's left off of 50 or 60% of the ballots, he ain't gonna do he ain't gonna get it. Yeah. He ain't gonna get it. I didn't I would like for him to get defensive player of the year and rookie of the year. That'd be amazing. But as you said, the likelihood of that happening, it's looking like it's less and less likely. It is. You know, it is, man. The and, numbers don't lie. And there is a, a belief of you don't give it to a rookie. Let <laughs> Matt Lerma says, I said, JJ is not getting a Christmas card. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I understand the frustration from Spurs fans, but at the end of the day, the Spurs were a 22 and 60 team. And he is the head of the 22 and 60 team. And I know it's an offense. It's an individualized award, not stuff, 
but still them's the rules. That's just how it gets played out 99 times out of 100. Yeah, look at Matt Lerma says JJ did give him first defensive team for Wemby. I want to see it. I think he'll at least get second team. That's at the very least. I think that's what Tim Duncan had, I believe, in his first year, in his rookie year. He made like the second team. You know, a lot of Spurs fans are upset that Wemby didn't make the All-Star team, for example. The yeah. last rookie to make the All-Star team was Blake Griffin, like wow. in 2011. Okay. Uh, LeBron James, if I'm not mistaken, did not, or or if he did, that's been a long, long time I don't remember ago. remember if he did or didn't. You have to look that up. Last NBA rookies to make All-Star team. Um you know, taking a look at rookies that have made the all-star team according to NBA.com. Uh no, he he, he did not. No. So the last ones in, in since the 2000s, Blake Griffin and Yao Ming. Yeah. Tim Duncan made it in 1998. Shaq, Dikembe Matumbo, David Robinson, Patrick Ewing, Hakeem Olajuwon, Ralph Sampson, Buck Williams, Bill Cartwright, Magic Johnson. Those are the rookies that have made it in my lifetime. So the idea that Wemby got snubbed, it's just historically difficult to do that. Yeah. And we should be prepared for that. I want to see him make first team all NBA defense, but no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen to win the award. Let's get some. Say, yeah. 22 and 60 doesn't buy you any favors. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Let's also give some love to Jeff Garcia as while we're at it, coming up Let's against the 30-minute mark. Locked on Spurs is your daily Spurs podcast, hosted by Jeff Garcia, the lead Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Jeff has a healthy plethora of guests all the time on the Locked on Spurs podcast. You can also follow Jeff on threads at Jeff G Ken's 5 SA. You can also follow Jeff on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. So make sure you go ahead and give Jeff a follow, not only on threads and Twitter, but also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash at Locked on Spurs. This is where you're going to be able to find the replay of the Locked on Spurs podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. We got a baddie coming to San Antonio. Do we have that entertainment bump? Oh, yeah. Ready to go? We do, man. Dude, a sweet 16 member coming to San Antonio. And if you can show my screen, according to ksat12.com, Shakira Shakira is coming to San Antonio Saturday, November 16th. She will perform at the Frost Bank Center. Got to make that money to pay those Spanish taxes Las somehow. Las ya no lloren tour. Nice, nice. Going on to say that uh, it's obviously going to be a sellout. Tickets go on sale at 10 a.m. Monday, April 22nd. So the next Monday they go on sale. She's also going to be performing in November at the American Airlines Center in Dallas. Dude, Shakita's so fine. You know, we talk about the batty brackets. Shakita would have been my personal number one overall pick. Like if I saw all 64 and I said, I got to take one of them home for the night. Not only that, if I could just marry one of them, it would be Shakira. It'd be Shakira. No Salma. No Salma. She's uh, 10 years older than me. Shakira is at least my age. Hey, man, Shakira still looks good, man. Dude, Shakira looks amazing. Been great, dude. Remember when she did the halftime show Super Bowl with uh, J-Lo? God. And, she, and everyone looked at the two and went, wait a minute. That booty shake hit different. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> we didn't realize that Shakita was that much hotter than J-Lo. Dude, she fine, fine. Yeah, she outshine her, man. I was like, damn. Do you notice that J-Lo gets a lot of hate these days? Like, she got canceled pretty hard, didn't she? I don't know why, and, though. And, like, and it's not because of something that she did. It's just her attitude. She apparently pisses people off. Dude, I come across so many TikToks. And I don't know if they're all accurate or not. But it's a bunch of people who say that they are like like wait staff and servers and people who work behind the scenes at movies and award shows and all that. And they all universally say that JLo is just a prick. Hmm. And I kind of see it. I think she likes things done a certain way, man. Like they don't like apparently like to the point where you can't look at her. Yeah. She just wears like all white. Everything in her house is all white. Yeah. You know? Now, I know back in the day there were 
artists and musicians out there who would say that they wanted certain weird things in their in their in their no. dressing room, like all green M and M's. Yeah, right. Or all M and M's, but no brown. And later on, people would think that that was just stupid. That was just being petty. True. But some musicians have come out and said that the reason why they did that was because they wanted to see that these fine details if the fine details for something like that was not fulfilled then it means that there's something else happening behind the scenes with their slacking they're slacking off somewhere else because if they couldn't do this they're not going to be able to do x y and z on the stage yeah so that's kind of now uh, again saying that you want to have caviar you want to have five dozen roses and you want to have everything smelling like lavender that's being petty and that's just being like ridiculous and being a diva. But J Lo is not a good actress. Her hit song, she doesn't sing. No. And if you've seen these these actors and comedians who knew her back in the 90s from like in Living Color, back in the day when she was uh, on there, a fly girl. Fly yeah. girl, they come out and say that she doesn't even like she shuns them. J Lo just seems like a prick. Just seems like a prick. And apparently, she made fun of Salma Hayek when Salma Hayek made the claim that she was being under consideration for the role of Selena in the movie Selena back in the mid nineties. Now I don't see Salma Hayek doing that. I think Salma Hayek has too thick of an accent yeah. to have actually played that role. So maybe JLo is right when it comes to that, but uh, some Latina on Latina slander there. We have a, a winner of the batty brackets. I know, man. Over 200 votes came in, and it was fast, dude. It was fast. And, of course, Chris Leha from MCS General Contracting yeah. uh, had to reach out to me. The, the moment that the poll would close, the poll closed at 10, 10 a.m., right? 10 a.m., right on the dot, he reaches out to me and says, I told you, I told you, Salma Hayek with 59% of the vote. Damn. Now. She, she ran away with it. I got to ask you a question real fast. I questioned whether or not she was the hottest celebrity out there still on the market, right? Mm -hmm. And I still, to some extent, do. She's still a hard 10, though, man. I said that she was a 10, not a hard 10. This is what she posted yesterday on Instagram. What's wrong with her, man? I had to, you know... I had to take down these photos, man. It it, uh, it gave me some Nickelodeon vibes. <laughs> Nickelodeon. Yeah. Oh, so I posted man. a different photo. I think uh, I think uh, Sith mentioned that earlier. Why did I take that down? Because this is very Nickelodeon esque, man. If I'm thinking something dirty, other people are thinking dirty things too. No. Uh, right. But Salma Hayek says, "When your family won't let you take a bikini pic in peace." <laughs> I love Castro and Sons, dude. He's always on it, dude. Look what he says. <laughs> Don't forget this is okay. Caitlin Clark is hot. Caitlin Clark is not an unattractive. If Caitlin Clark curled her hair, because we see her with just all straight hair, she's not unattractive. She's cute. Christopher Leha. I DM her and said, Mama Sota, remind me. Remind the world you're the baddest woman alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So let me ask you this. How old can she keep going and still win this batty brackets? If you and I are doing batty brackets 2025, 2026, you can't tell me in 2027 a 60-year-old Selma Hayek is going to win this award. I mean, of course, she's going to have to be dethroned at some time. But if the if the voters keep voting for her, she's going to keep winning. I mean, from the neck down, she's still a 10. Her face has gone from a 10 to a 9. Oh, man. I, I said it. I oh, said what I said. I said what I said. Although this is a great look right there. Okay. If this is like unfiltered, then this would be like she's still a 10 up top. 10 down below. I'm, I'm look if you look at my the uh, nine up top. Still a hard 10 overall. Still a hard 10 overall. But congratulations to Selma Hayek. She's a baddie. And that is okay. Maybe, <laughs> maybe she, why does she look like Megan Fox in this? What what filter is she using in this thing? It's probably just the lighting and the outfit, man. Okay, maybe I was wrong. I'll take it back. I'll take it back for right now. I'll take it back for I'll a little look bit. Look at JHS and JHNSV says pull us side by side of Caitlin Clark and Raymond from Everybody Loves Raymond. We're we're gonna go there. He we're, says we're, that she looks like that. No, she doesn't. 
Let me see here. Caitlin Clark. I don't know. You have to do it like that. Why you got to do that? Why you got to do that? Okay, what they look like on the court is different than what they look like. Because Angel Reese yesterday was just rocking it yesterday. It's very difficult to look really good as a female athlete while you're doing what you're doing. Unless your name is Livy Dunn. Oh, gosh. I mean, they're not going to be wearing heels out there. She's a good-looking girl, dude. She's a good-looking girl. Let's see commercials here. Maybe do a little something different with the hair, but that's about it. Not a bad-looking girl. Angel Reese, though, was bringing it yesterday. Yeah, I mean, did they, you see her outfit yesterday? Yeah, I mean, she knew she was going to she's going to get drafted, and she likes to, you know, fix herself up for the big occasion. You yeah, know? No, Angel Reese is a hottie, dude, I, and uh, she, she's going by Bayou Barbie on her on her Instagram. I like that, page. dude. That is cool. So let's let's take a look at uh, some of the posts from yesterday. Oh, look at look at look at this at Raising Canes. Why? Because Raising Canes is where LSU is is from LSU. The first raising canes is at LSU. But this was her outfit. It was, dude, like the entire fashion world was all about her outfit yesterday. Amazing. Oh, I bet, man. She looked great. She she made a, a statement with the dress, mm -hmm. you know? Again, she's a champion, but who isn't? Caitlin Clark isn't a champion. <laughs> Love it. Love it. WNBA, man, it finally matters. It took some time, but it finally matters. Joe, what are you doing this summer, man? Do you have any uh, summer plans? Uh, summer plans. Probably taking my son, dropping him off uh, at college as we get near the end of the summer there. Where did he choose? Still don't know. Still waiting for him to make the decision. I told him, you have to make the decision already. <laughs> He's got so many options. It's like, you got to make the decision. But I think at the top of his list, he's got it down to like three, you know, so Texas Tech, one of them. Yeah, of course. Dude. Texas State. Uh, I believe so. And also, uh, was it uh, St. Edwards over in Austin? OK, so two of them where he'll get drunk at and one where he'll learn at, right? One he'll learn at. And I think he has the best uh, chance of actually, you know, going into the field that he wants to go in because he's going to go for animation and all this. And the Mecca is Austin, dude. That's where they have all these game developers and, you know, if he wants to go in that career, he can go in there and and get an internship and probably even get paid for it, which is kind of unheard of. Dude, okay, paid I mean, internships. That's crazy, dude. Okay, so I, I'm a believer that internships should be paid, right? Yeah. But dude, I worked for two and a half years for free at KSAT, <laughs> 40 hours a week for oh, free. Man. man, I was Greg Simmons's bitch for two and a <laughs> half years. Didn't make anything, but they fed me every night, dude. Every night they would get me Bill Miller's or some pizzeria that off of a Broadway, some you know some yeah. greasy ass pizza. I was Greg Simmons's bitch for so long. Greg Simmons didn't try to finagle you by betting the, in the newsroom. The, no man, that was the <laughs> Dan Cook. I know y'all don't believe me. Y'all think it's oh a no, tale. I believe you. I'm just saying that it, it would be not unheard of if they did that to you too in case have i ever told a story about greg simmons throwing a phone at me no <laughs> okay. i don't think you've ever said that okay so greg simmons back in the day was the most intense person of all time if you've ever seen the movie anchorman and the fight that went on between you know ron burgundy and uh, veronica corningstone where they're hitting each other and they're throwing crap at each other in the newsroom that kind of existed in news about 20 years ago. Not anymore. You walk into a newsroom now, it's all corporate. Yeah. You know, you've got uh, millennials and Gen Gen Z there. It ain't going to happen anymore, right? But back in the day when the Zennials and Gen Xers and baby boomers were, were in the newsroom, we would curse each other out. We would talk some mad crap at each other. And it was a very, very, very vulgar place sometimes. Yeah. And it wasn't vulgar as in like it was demeaning. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, you'd have a hothead to spout off and go off. Yeah. And and Greg Simmons was known as having a very bad temper. That he was. Uh, but he was also known as he liked, liked to party after the news and, and whatnot. But the thing about it is this, is that Greg, one time, I did something wrong. And he got mad at me. And, and, and I, I stood up for myself. And he got mad and he threw a phone at me, but it wasn't a regular phone. It <laughs> wasn't an old tiny phone. It was the ones that you pick up from the back and Damn. you lift up. You know, it was like a, it was like a cube, like a square. Yeah. And he threw it at me, and it ended up hitting like a partition of a of a of a cubicle. We had a guy named Jeff Bowers who was the producer at the time. 
Yeah. Uh, and it, it hit his desk. And people thought that the thought that it was over, like the fight was over because A, it missed me. And I don't think he was trying to hit me. I think he was trying to make a point. So he aimed it in my direction, but not at me. It's like instead of me throwing it at you, I threw it like over there, just kind of make yeah. a point, right? Well, I, I went and picked it up and I threw it right at him and it went over his head. Now I wasn't gonna hit him either, but I made a point for it to crash off the wall right behind him. Yeah. And uh five minutes later, we're laughing. You know, five minutes later, it's like <laughs> like Anchorman. Well, yeah, it was like <laughs> I, I think he liked the fact that I stood up for myself and all yeah. that crap because I, I was a very, very good intern. Yeah. The other intern that was there is named Mario. He's now the news director over at KSET. Like he went the distance and now runs KSET 12, which is amazing. And my mom asked me, I don't know, a few months ago, because I told her that story about how uh my friend Mario were the same age. Yeah. We, we we met each other at our high school proms. Like my prom, we, I went downtown. His prom, he went downtown. And we met each other because we were wearing identical suits. I wore a Houston Oilers tux to prom. It was it was a black tux. It was really nice. But it had a reversible uh, cummerbund and a reversible oh, okay. ve uh, vest. And the vest was a bunch of Houston Oilers logos on there. He wore the exact same one. So we bonded on that. And then we went to KSAT later on. We're like, hey, we're interns together, right? So my mom was like, mijo, you could have been like him. You could have ran that department on stuff. I was like, man, that would have made me work in the newsroom for 35 years. No, thank you, dude. Mm -hmm. I had a 10-year run in TV news from 97 to about 2006, 2007. I went back in 2014. I did a radio show for three years. That is the extent of the media. I cannot picture myself being like a full timer yeah. anymore in that. Well, it's just a different world, yeah. man. You like the life you have now, you know, doing what you're doing. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I make better money doing yeah. finance. Just kind of is what it is. Rudy Gonzalez reaches out and says, Tall Tales. And then Jesse reaches out and says, Tall Tales with MJ. Joe should get his son to animate the Tall Tales. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> Sis, and I threw the phone underhanded. <laughs> <laughs> Midtown Mike making excuses for Greg Simmons abuse. <laughs> God, man. I love me some Greg Simmons, man. You know, uh, Greg is uh, somebody who took a chance on me, man. I remember I was 15, 16 years old, 16 years old. Right. And I am at my house. And if you can picture the phone that we had, so we had this one garage that, that my dad converted into a living room. And then I had we had so we had that was which was the garage, and then we had the laundry room, and then we had my bedroom. So if you can picture me getting the phone, which is in the kitchen, and taking that thirty foot wired cord out, the one that crinkles up, to, just so I can have some privacy. My mom answers the phone. Michael, phone's for you. Yada yada. I answer the phone, and it's Greg Simmons on the line, and he's like, "Hey, this is Greg Simmons from KSAT at twelve, and I'm over here, a sophomore or junior." at Holmes High School going, Greg Simmons is calling me? And he goes, dude, I read your articles. I know that you're writing for the Express News as, as a teen, teen columnist. I know that you have a, a, a column that you do at the uh, school newspaper. He goes, I like your stuff. It's really good. Have you ever thought about going into TV news or TV sports? Yeah. I was like, dude, Greg Simmons, who had been the king of KSAT 12 sports, and back then, by the way, you watched Instant Replay and you watched Sports Center because that's all you had. Yeah. Okay. And he goes, Come on over. And he invited me to go over there and basically be his bitch for two years, two and a half years. And eventually, but he trained me so well that I was able to do so many different things that by the time I went to college, I was like, dude, I'm so far advanced above everybody. Yeah. That by the time I was a junior in college, I was already being offered TV reporting gigs in Corpus Christi at really big TV stations. And I was, and by the time I was 23, I just turned 23. I was back in San Antonio as an on-air reporter. Yeah, yeah, That's and it's good all stuff, man. It's all because of Greg Simmons doing his thing, and and helping me out when it comes to things. And I, 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 I really, uh, I love the man, and I know he's had a lot of issues that have come up. Uh, but my goodness, uh, I would not have the career, and me being successful in finance right now has a lot to do with what. What he did and what he did for me. So Greg Simmons is a good guy. And I ran into Greg Simmons last on the 50-year anniversary of the San Antonio Spurs, the celebration at the Alamo Dome. I ran into him and to Steve Spreester. 
Uh, Rudy Gonzalez said the George Michael Sports Zone as well. That was great, man. There it is. Greg, oh, the George Michael Sports Zone. That was great. He pushed the button. You know, he will. Yeah. Oh, let's do the Masters over here. 19, 1998. You know, Tiger Woods at Augusta. Let's go to the highlights. And he pushed the button. The, the button did nothing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it, did it was nothing. just, it was just stick. I hate to break it to you. The button did nothing. Okay. There's a guy in a control room actually pushing the buttons, but he pushed it to make it look like the, 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 something's happening. After something's happening. You see the video spinning and stuff yeah. like that. Great. He used man. to do skits too. I remember that was funny too. It was a thing for, for, you know, local television here. Yeah. You know, and he would get all the uh, sports anchors involved and some of the, uh, other anchors in the newsroom involved and they would do their little skits and it was funny man he was great man it, it was good he was he was good uh but back in the day you know you'd have like Stuart scott craig kilborn was my favorite dude dan patrick uh keith olbermann charlie yeah. steiner these were great great well, when they were good <laughs> all right we have a ten dollar super chat from chris leha coming on in Saying USOA wants to let Mike know he is not a member. You got to pay your dues. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> How do I pay dues? I don't know. Do I have to to pray to the throne that is Salma Hayek? Oh god, I don't know. That's funny, dude. That's funny. Maybe they want more demon time with Mike. Yeah, demon Mike sometimes makes an appearance, man. man. It, it, and you never know when it's going to come out. You never know. Maybe I'm yeah. trying to reel it back in a little bit, but Demon Mike still is under the surface there, you know, just below the surface, just below the surface. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting of a certain age where it gets to be kind of creepy. Yeah. And Leha says, we'll talk about it later. Mario Cavazzo is saying the Benny Hill show was immediately after the George Michael sports. Show. Dude, Benny Hill, dude. Talk about shows that will never fly in the year 2024. Oh, no, dude. Dude, the never. music was annoying, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then they would speed up the video. The, you talk the video. about Demon Time. Benny Hill was on one all the time, dude. Hey, um, who is the most famous person to be a Benny Hill girl? Oh, man. There was so many, dude. Dare I say... I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a photo right now. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Dare I say Daphne from Frasier? Oh, who I didn't know she was a Benny Hill girl. She was a Benny Hill girl, dude. Wow. Who would have thought? I would have never thought she was a Benny Hill girl. Now, Daphne from Frasier back in the 90s. I was in my 20, early 20s. You were smitten. I was smitten. <laughs> <laughs> like she is a nerdy British girl. I was smitten. Do you know who else I was smitten over? Ross. Who's the Ross? producer. His uh, producer. <laughs> Frazier's producer. Oh, Ross. Ross, yeah. <laughs> she had kinda, the smoky voice. You kinda. Know? Kinda. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up, man. Uh dude. Connie Britton and Spin City. She did it for me, dude. She did it for me. Connie Britton and Spin City. Even today, she's a nugget. This is more, more her now. Wow. Even today, she's a nugget. Connie Britton, man. These are names I haven't heard of in a while. <laughs> Dude, how do we get to Daphne Moon from, <laughs> <laughs> from Frasier? The reboot was there. Oh, uh, man. Lerma <laughs> says, I have to have at least three fights in Fiesta to be USOA. I did mention that I was one and one in middle school, so I was two and one lifetime record. Midtown, you need to throw a phone back at Simmons. He I did. did. He did. I did. That's that's a mark. Went, went above him. Went above him. <laughs> Rudy Richards out Betty Hill was king. Matt Lerma. What an <laughs> ass. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the F is Betty Hill. Making fun of our age. <laughs> Dude, I'm not even gonna air it, man. I it, Betty Hill just makes me feel gives me the creeps. Yeah, dude, that that was a whole other level of creepy there. Back in the jeez, dude, 80s. Yeah, the uh, years that it was on, it ended in 1989. It ran from 1950. Oh wait, it ran from 1955 to 1989. Wow. Are you serious? It ran for 34 years. That's crazy, man. And I think what they were showing here in the States when they started showing it on late night TV, those were just like uh, replays, you know, of the episodes. 
there's even a list here of the loveliest of the uh, Benny Hill girls. Yeah, we're not going to go through them, but the, this, oh uh, yeah, let's just go bro. ahead. Let's go ahead and go off. You of that. crashed. You crashed it. <laughs> <laughs> it says you do not want to go in there. Uh, Jed Esposito on uh, Spin City was fire. That's right, man. She was a sassy girl. She was a sassy Latina on that show. Damn. Michael J. Fox. You know what I was watching on TikTok yesterday? I was watching on TikTok. Uh, there were old skits of In Living Color. Oh, yeah. And uh, there was one that they did, like, several skits of Michael Jackson. Um, and it was like, they they did a spoof on Black or White, that video, where they're going, he's black. Oh, yeah. He's white. And the way that they were able to mimic that for a TV show back in the early 90s was actually pretty good, man. Yeah. They did a lot of stuff back then. I remember uh, Homie the Clown was pretty funny. His skits, you know? And uh, was it Men on Film? That was that was freaking hilarious, dude. They can't get away with stuff like that no more. It's a different different times, man. Okay, so Sith is reaching out and says, LMAO, laugh my ass off. Last night we talked about late 90s Playboy issues. I couldn't name a single person. I can name one. <laughs> I can name one because I met one. I met one. Her name was Stacy Sanchez. I'm not going to look it up because I'll crash the computer. Oh, but God. it's Stacy Sanchez with an S at the end of Sanchez. So it's S A N C H E S. Stacy Sanchez. Look her up. Give me some comments. Jim Carrey as Vanilla Ice is classic. Now ask me where I met Stacy Sanchez. Where'd you meet her? I met her at the Walden Books inside Ingram Park Mall wow, back in the dude. late 90s. My friends and I. Just Nasios, just walk walking over from from Holmes High School because she was having a book signing at that bookstore <laughs> down low, right right across from Spencer's. Yeah, you know, like there's like the Lubies is right there. It's right across. They used to have like a Walden Books there, basically on your lunch hour. Yeah, <laughs> it's Stacy Sanchez, this smoking hot, you know, uh, uh, this smoking hot Playboy model from Dallas, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, was there. I have no idea what happened to the autograph. Maybe my dad has it. I don't know. But she signed my copy of Playboy for that. Yeah, your dad took it from me. It's mine. Yeah. So <laughs> I guess in my lifetime, I've met two Playboy Playmate models. And Paige Baronic. And Paige Baronic. Yeah. Because the other one that I met, the other Playboy Playmate that I met was the one from here in San Antonio. Uh, let me see here. Uh, deal or no deal. She was number 13. It wasn't Layla, but it was, uh, oh, my God, what was her name? What was her name? I, I I told the tall tale story about it. Pilar Lastra, who's from San Antonio. Uh, I played poker with her at uh, a friend's house several times. I didn't even know that she was on Deal or No Deal at the time. Huh. She was just some cute girl who was playing who was playing poker. Yeah, in a hoodie, <laughs> you know. And then I saw her all glammed out one night, and I was like, "Oh my god, she's hot!" <laughs> Again, she's from San Antonio. So I've met two. Playboy Playmates, like centerfolds, covers. Yeah. Those are the two. Nice, dude. I've met Paige Baronic. That is the extent. <laughs> the extent. No. Oh, Th that, that is the, the hotties of the hotties. <laughs> oh, man. They're sending me pictures here in the DMs uh, of, of Castro who? and Sons. They kind of merged your face with uh, what's her name? Um, the number one overall pick from the WNBA. Caitlin Clark. Uh huh. Oh, I was like, oh man. <laughs> and then they have the other picture with Duncan that says USOA. <laughs> He's the official mascot. Duncan's the mascot. Duncan. Oh God, dude. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Dude, this fuchsia shirt is throwing me off, man. Oh it, man, it, it's throwing me off. So again, when did USOA start? Because I I see the hashtags all the time. It started earlier in the season, dude. Like it just came out of left field. I guess they had been planning it for a while, and then they started hashtagging everything USOA, 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 and they made a. Are there female versions of USOA? No, not to my knowledge, man. But Christopher Leha and Sith and Bear County, I think, is Castro. They're like all the founding members there. So, got some breaking news coming into the Alamo City Sportscast. Drop in just seven minutes ago. NBA star Blake Griffin is calling it a career. Wow. Blake Griffin has retired after 14 seasons. He's 35 years old, was the number one overall pick in 2009. Again, was the last player ever 
to be a rookie and make the all-star team, let's go over Blake Griffin's stats and see if he is Hall of Fame worthy. Just out of curiosity, do you think Blake Griffin, just snapshot, Blake Griffin, 14 years in the NBA, do you think he's in Hall of Fame worthy, close to it? I'd say no, not at, not at all. Yeah, he's in the Hall of Very Good. Here's the thing about, about Blake Griffin as I'm looking at his stats here. He was a, he did, he missed his rookie season, his first season, very much like Chet Holmgren, where he missed the entire season because of a knee injury. So his first rookie year was actually his second year in the NBA. He won rookie of the year and he was an all-star his first season that he played. He was an all-star the first five seasons that he played again with the Clippers. And then a few years later, picked up a sixth all-star nomination when he was playing for the Detroit Pistons. So he's a six-time all-star. The guy for his career averaged 19 points per game. For his career averaged about eight rebounds and four assists per game. Hall of very good. Wow. The Hall of very good, right? That That's basically what it is. <laughs> very good. You know, and, and, you know, so, I mean, there are certain players out there that are in that Hall of very good that sometimes get out. Yeah. You know, LaMarcus Aldridge. That's a hard case for Hall of Fame, man. Like, I think he's done enough. 20,000 points. Was he have like eight or nine all-star appearances? Yeah, he had, he had, a, he had a good amount of all-star appearances. I, I think that LaMarcus Aldridge is probably like the, what is he? He's like the, um, like the, they call it the Mendoza line in baseball. You know, seven-time all-star, three-time all-NBA second team, or two-time sec- all-NBA second team, three-time all-NBA third team. All rookie first team. He was a good college player. 20,558 points, average 19 points per game. Very similar stats to Blake Griffin, but a longer career, you know, less injury prone career. 20,000 points is 20,000 points. There's not a lot of 20,000 point players in the NBA. I believe there's under 50, if I'm not mistaken. No. I mean, he had the points, he just didn't have the, uh, the hardware. To go along with it, you right? Know, the the accolades, you know, all time NBA point leaders. There are fifty one who have had twenty thousand points. Here are the ones that have not made the all that have not made the Hall of Fame, and we'll go over whether whether or not they should. At number fifty one, Anton Jameson. No, this guy played for like nine teams. No, no. Number 50, Tom Chambers. Dude, I like Tom Chambers back in the day, man. I thought that guy was really good. Uh, I would say Tom Chambers should be a Hall of Famer. Joe Johnson. Can you imagine Joe Johnson is the 49th leading scorer of NBA history wow. with 20,407 points? LaMarcus Aldridge is 47 at 20,558. He has more points than Mitch Richmond. By the way, guess who's next on the list of scoring? If LaMarcus Aldridge plays one more season, who he would pass? Who would he pass? If he played one more season, let's say he played 40 games, half a season. Let's say he only added 400 points, right? Just four or 500 points left in his career. Yeah. If he had 500 extra points in his career and got to 21,000, he would pass George Gervin next, then David Robinson, then Dave Pettit, then Paul Gasol, then Walt Bellamy. Wow. To move into number 41, 42 of all time. Crazy. That's some some big company there. Hey, number 41 all time is Dame Lillard. <laughs> did you, did wow. you know that? Dame Dollar. Did you know that Dame Lillard is going to be a Hall of Famer because he has 21,000 points and he's Jeez. probably got about five or 6,000 left in him? Yeah. Did you know that the 20th highest scoring player in NBA history? Who is it? James Harden. Oh, man. Did you know 24 is Russell Westbrook? <laughs> 30 is Curry. I look at what they're saying about Griffin. He was the best ginger ever to play in the NBA. Red Mamba. Did you see what Boban did the other day? Oh, man. I <laughs> say so he missed the free throws so everybody could get free chicken. <laughs> we talk about a team player, man. Yeah. <laughs> and then after he misses, he gives the crowd a, a thumbs up. <laughs> So the the legend of Boban Marjanovic continues, oh. and we'll show the video. This is according. This is 
uh, this is Bally Sports. They had made the announcement. Again, Boban played for the Clippers for a few years, All obviously a former Spur as well. They made the announcement that if a opposing team misses two free throws in a row in the fourth quarter, that everybody would get a Chick-fil-A sandwich for free. <laughs> that was inside the crypto the crypto arena there, and they made the announcement between his first and second free throw. He said, "I got you." He goes, "I got <laughs> you." This game's out of Houston was already winning, going to go on to win the game. Yeah. They weren't going to make the playoffs, but anyway, he's like, "I got you, I got you." And look at this seven foot five free throw attempt right here, just clanked it. Clank. He missed it on purpose, <laughs> he gives and then the- he, he points at the crowd. Yeah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Dude, I'd be pissed off if I was Chick Fil A, man. That's that's eighteen thousand pieces of chicken. Man. Jeez, that's a lot of chicken. <laughs> Boban. Hey, you know another announcement too. Breaking news is that for our, our wrestling fans, uh, Rhea Ripley. She's going to be out. She's got injuries. Oh, uh, really? She got an injury. She uh, kind of injured her shoulder there, and she had to vacate the women's world championship on Raw due to her injury. She's going to be out for about three months she's going to have her shoulder injury is going to take like four to six weeks to gain mobility and then three months to be fully back into action so she's going to be out for quite some time man that's so that's sad yeah Yeah. it it is i mean it is a big deal i mean i mean they it it is quote unquote fake but it's also realistic injuries it is realistic athletics going on over there adam sheffer's reporting today on espn.com and on his on Twitter, saying that the expectation for the NFL draft next week is that it will set the record for the most offensive players drafted in the first round. That the most there's ever been has been 19. It's happened three times, most recently in 2009. Shefty going out and saying that this will shatter it because there might be 20 or more. Also, there's a new cover of Time Magazine, the world's most influential people, and guess who's on the cover? Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes, baby, Mahomes, my homie, my homie. Mm-hmm. Texas Tech alum. I know. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Brandon, Big Poppy, Brandon Medina, is always singing the praises of one Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, he has to. Yeah, I mean, Texas Tech guy, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, the idea that Mitchell Trubisky was <laughs> was drafted <laughs> above him is insane. Adam Sheffer is also reporting that uh, JJ McCarthy is visiting the Washington Commanders. Washington Commanders, who have the number two overall pick. A lot of people think Jaden Daniels will be the guy, but McCarthy is making his way up. And I would not be surprised if J.J. McCarthy gets picked at number two. Yeah. I mean, it would be a surprise, but it wouldn't be like jaw-dropping. It just yeah. kind of be is what it is. Uh, we've learned a lot today. What did we learn today? We learned that... A whole uh, bunch. WNBA the, is the, back. The man. WNBA, well, it's, it's finally here. It took yeah. a generation been 25 years it's finally here and people give a crap kaylin clark went number one overall angel reese went number seven she and cardozo will be teammates yeah they were jawing at each other remember when cardozo hit that girl from lsu oh yeah and and kim mulkey head coach of lsu was like wish she had done that to angel reese angel reese is like nope and, and, <laughs> and angel reese is like i'm on the bench but i'm too important you know <laughs> now angel reese and cardozo are now teammates for chicago that's amazing. Now I miss the fact that San Antonio doesn't have a WNBA team and we lost ours to Las Vegas. You know what's funny? The irony is that if the team had stayed, would they have still won back to back titles? Right. Or would they have not won? I mean, the difference maker was not only the, the players that were on the team, but it was Coach Becky Hammond. You know, speaking of Becky Hammond, earlier we were talking about how the the careers of these players, they're not going to be making much money on the court. I mean, Caitlin Clark is going to be the star of the WNBA and will make 15,000 more than the teacher at Northside ISD. Yeah. As a salary for being the player we will make millions more in endorsements. Just go ask Jake from state farm because they hugged as she got drafted. Yeah. Um, the thing about it is this, is that the salaries will get better, but you look at like Brittany Griner, but she was imprisoned in Russia. Why was she over there? Because they actually pay them over there. Becky Hammond played in Russia for a long, long time. Why? Because she wasn't making money in the United States. She was making money over there. Yeah. So now that they can make money in the United States, it becomes a big deal. That that big three, 
uh, the three on three that uh, Ice Cube has, and he oh, offered yeah. five million dollars to Caitlin Clark. How do you say no? Yeah. How do you say no? It's an awful lot of money, dude. Jesse A says he learned about USOA. Apparently, I gotta like be invited to the to the gang because I just uh, search USOA on Twitter to see what's there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and apparently I'm not invited. I'm not, I'm not I'm not hard enough, man. I'm not tough enough. <laughs> but apparently someone in my household is my dog Duncan. Duncan, <laughs> Duncan does look tough though, man. It's That's a good funny, looking dude. dog. That's a good looking dog. The freaking picture they have of Duncan, dude. It's funny. Congratulations to Blake Griffin. We learned that he's retiring after 14 seasons. Hey. At least, at least he had a a 14 year season, mm -hmm. you know, 14 seasons in the NBA, you know, I mean, he, he set up, you know, he set himself up for life. Hopefully, you know, he doesn't squander the, the earnings, yep. but he's, he's had some troubles too, you know, in the past, he's had uh, a lot of issues with him and getting into skirmishes with, you know, like the, I guess the people behind the scenes, you mm -hmm. know, coaches and whatnot, breaking his hand, Hitting a wall and stuff like Dude, that. Dude, Blake you Griffin's. Know? Uh, I I think of Blake Griffin more of him being on that roast on Comedy Central, oh. and that comedian was basically saying that she'd do him in front of that he's so attractive she'd do him in front of her grandma. Oh my dude, god, dude, that was that was great. That was great. We learned that Shakita's coming to San Antonio and the tickets go on sale next week, and we learned that San Antonians loves love them some Salma Hayek. They Salma do, Hayek is the twenty twenty four batty bracket challenge hope everyone has a fantastic day i believe uh today is it today that the nba uh, playoffs get going is, is this uh no is it's, it tomorrow i think it's tomorrow they have the it's play today. in play in starts today does it start today 6 30 you've got the lakers taking on the pelicans and you've got the warriors taking on the kings and then uh let's see here that's that's today today's the 16th right yeah and then tomorrow you have the Heat taking on the Sixers and the Hawks taking on the Bulls. Again, the way that the play-in tournament works is seven plays eight, nine plays ten. The loser of nine ten gets eliminated. The winner of seven eight advances to the playoffs, and then the loser of seven eight plays the winner of nine ten for the last spot in the playoffs. That's how it works. Yep. Kind of confusing, but I kind of like it. Mario Cavasso said, "Mike, you need to be initiated to USOA." You know what? I'll, I'll accept the invite if I, if it's given. If it's given. A full night in the rain. Duncan hard as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Cody was there with him. <laughs> but, but, but Cody gets no invite. He doesn't get no love. Because he doesn't because he because he looks like a dumbass. <laughs> like a dumb golden retriever. No, he looks like he's just like he wouldn't hurt a fly, Cody. No, he would. Yeah. Duncan's the alpha in the house. <laughs> of the dogs. Yeah. I'm the alpha of the house. No. Oh, <laughs> Everyone have a fantastic day. It's Tuesday in San Antonio. Hey, be careful on the roads. It's slick out there. See you guys tomorrow.